Good Tuesday evening, everybody, live and direct from House Onica, meteorologist Austin Onica with an update of your complete forecast. This is our video weather blog, Weather Overtime. If you've never heard of this before, drop by wreg.com slash weather for more information about what's going on with your forecast with Tim and Jim later on tonight. We don't have anything in the way of major amounts of problems going on right now. Most of the threat of severe weather is going to go east of us for later on tonight, but there still is that possibility that we could see some of the that activity here in the Mid-South area. It's not quite as much as, say, Nashville, uh, Knoxville, Huntsville, into that area, Franklin, Columbia, Middle Tennessee. That looks to be a much better chance of anything involving severe weather, but not a great deal happening here just yet. It looks like hopefully everything moving southeast away from us, but we'll take a complete look at that forecast coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more about that. Heading into this evening, again, if you have any plans for outdoors and travel, we do have, again, and some areas of concern showing up on SIGAlert.com. We've got, it looks like, an accident around the East Brown 240 I've uh, I-240 at Mill Branch. That hopefully cleared up a little bit. The area in and around Sam Cooper all the way back to I-240 uh, back along Poplar Avenue is still looking a little bit backed up there. Likewise, the flyover from 240 North uh, from Little Rock heading back up around the loop. Also in and around the area of I-240 at Airways, we're seeing some uh, possible problems showing up in that location. So if you have any, again, plans for travel for this evening, this is where we're looking at the main problems. Let me get back to that one uh, roadway right there. That's, again, mainly what we're looking at for right now. Scoot that over a little bit so you can see a little bit more as to what's going on. Apologies, this is a new program I'm working with here, so still kind of learning the uh, ins and outs of SigAlert and also everything else going on. There we go. That's what traffic looks like right now about I-240 and airways. And if you are traveling in either location, again, we are looking at some uh, decent amounts of slowdowns out there down to around areas close to uh, Interstate 22, heading into and around the area of, uh, looks like around the Tuggle Road area, Shelby Drive traffic down to about maybe 20 miles per hour. And of course, outbound traffic in and around Poplar and 240 also having its own concerns at this point in time. What we have in the way of weather for tonight. Uh, switching to that as we come up on 6 o'clock. And thanks for joining us here on News Channel 3 Weather Overtime. Most of the storm system that's uh, heading our direction for tonight, the possibility of severe weather, is going to be charged up by this area of very intense uh, wind coming around the Great Lakes. This storm system back up to our north and east, that's going to be swinging around and taking a lot of the energy with it and moving it off to the east. Basically, it's not going to be much of a threat for us anytime soon soon, but that's where the main portion of energy is coming on through. Now, we did have some thunderstorms earlier. We don't have that much going on just as of right now. We are seeing, again, uh, the possibility of more thunderstorms popping up uh, into later on tonight. Much of what we're looking at right now, again, as you can see at the top of your screen, we do have, again, some more showers more than anything else. We're not even really detecting too much lightning up there, but we could be looking at more possibilities of problems uh, heading down a little bit closer to us into the next couple of hours. Overnight doesn't really look that bad, but again, we'll be keeping our eyes on that. Water vapor satellite showing again mainly dry air down to our south. The dark gray colors indicating where we see again the possibility of uh, drier conditions out there. Less so in the way of that. Back to the north, we has we, we have a front moving on through that is helping to kind of stir up and irritate the atmosphere by just a little bit. You can see a little bit more of that on the visible satellite imagery, that big poof of clouds over Middle Tennessee. That's the tops of those thunderstorms blossoming out and spreading out over throughout portions of the atmosphere and doing a good job of covering over most of the middle part of the state. Fractured clouds back toward around Arkansas, Oklahoma, and northern Mississippi, mostly clear well on down to the south of that. Take a look at our interactive radar page when you have an opportunity opportunity to do so. Very neat opportunity to see a little bit more about what's going on in and around the Mid-South area. As you can see, a little bit more about what's actually happening out there. And you can see, again, great amounts of uh, thunderstorms back to our 
uh, east at this point in time, right back over middle of the eastern Tennessee down to the south and west of Knoxville, all the way down to Atlanta and Huntsville, picking up most of the activity there. If you'd like to see more of our interactive radar page, it's available at wreg.com slash weather, and you can do all this information on here, plus a whole bunch more. you got tons of weather details, including information about lightning and earthquakes, and once tropical storm season gets here in just about two and a half months, you'll be able to see a lot more about what's going on uh, there, keeping you updated on things like that. Let's go back to the Mid-South area and show you a little bit more about what's happening, which as of right now does not really amount to much. We are seeing again those scattered showers just back to our north, but not really seeing much more than that, at least so far. There's some of that activity from around I-70 south of St. Louis all the way down uh, into portions of the rest of the Mid-South area. Again, dropping on down to about the Tennessee-Kentucky state line. Most of that should be moving southeast of us and hopefully continuing in that direction. And again, if you'd like to access more of this e uh, information here, all you have to do is go to wrhe.com slash weather for more details on that. Front kind of wobbling its way back and forth across the area, and that's going to help to irritate some more thunderstorms out of what we've got uh, uh, here for tonight. What we're looking at again into about the next 24 hours is going to be uh, the possibility of some more areas of showers and thunderstorms with this front as it comes on through and drops just down to our south. So we could see some lingering thunderstorms into very early tomorrow morning and that hopefully should begin to break up as we go toward the afternoon hours into Wednesday. But there could still be a few lingering showers and maybe a few thunderstorms left over from that. Heading into midnight on Wednesday, uh, Thursday morning, we see again drier conditions in here. And then another storm system, if you look to the uh, western half of the country, that's where we see again the possibility of some stronger conditions out there. A lot of rain, a lot of snow across the Rockies, and that gets a little bit closer to us, launching itself out into the prairies. Once this thing has a lot more room to maneuver, that's where we start to see a little bit more of a problem heading our direction. As the system gets out of the Rockies, it spreads out into the Plain States, and that's where it has a lot more room to maneuver. That's where it gets a lot more energy, and that's where the danger comes from, because once it picks up all that moisture, stirs it up, lifts it up in the atmosphere, that's where you can get the possibility of some pretty good-sized thunderstorms out there. And that's what we may be looking for as we go into around Friday night. So that is something we're going to watch with a lot of interest. Currently, no watches or warnings as the time we take this. As of about 6 o'clock in the evening, we have no severe weather to speak of directly here in the Mid-South. So that's good news. But if you are going to be traveling, say, east or southeast, again, Huntsville, Knoxville, Nashville, Atlanta, you may run into some problems on the roadways there, so definitely want to keep it tuned to local media there. Here in the Mid-South, uh, Storm Prediction Center and the National Weather Service not putting a great deal of stock into anything going on for tonight. There will be the possibility of showers and thunderstorms. There will be some rumbles of thunder. Maybe, again, the possibility of some lightning out there. So outdoor activities, or if you're doing anything outdoors tonight, that's what you're going to have to watch out for. Now, the main possibility of severe weather, the enhanced risk in the orange shaded category that you see over again toward Middle Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Georgia, and back into around maybe extreme western areas of North Carolina. That's going to be the main target zone for tonight. Now earlier today that threat was a little bit closer to us. Now it appears like it's moving away, but we're not quite done just yet. If you uh, notice again what we're looking at into the area uh, into and around the Mid-South, we're showing again that dark green shaded area. That's a, uh, what, what we're looking at right there is different levels of what we see out there. And that is going to be, again, a, a possibility. It's a, not exactly a huge threat. It's what we again see into the area of possible enhanced risk in the orange slight. And then again, not just really seeing too much of anything. It's a borderline possibility of severe weather into much of the area for the later on evening hours, mainly along and north of I-40. And that's going to be about it. The next several days does show again the possibility of some stronger weather as we get into the end of the week. Again, days four through five that you see there. Uh, that's the threat again as we get into around the end of the week. So Friday into Saturday, 
possibility of some stronger storms coming on through as that system lifts its way that we were just talking about coming off the Rockies. That's going to engage moisture from off the Gulf of Mexico, and that's what gives us the possibility of some stronger weather. What are we looking for in the potential of anything involving rainfall? Well, as we get into, again, later on tonight, most of what we're going to be looking at is going to be, again, uh, the possibility of seeing some cooler temperatures out across much of the Mid-South as numbers will be back into around the 40s and lower 50s that's pretty much normal for this time of the year. Now, as we get into tomorrow, the chances of rain basically gone from the Mid-South area, and we'll be looking for high temperatures back in the mid to upper 50s to lower 60s. So expect a very cool day coming up as we get into tomorrow. We're talking about some very cool numbers out there, but at least we'll be clearing things out by just a little bit. Should be getting into some sunshine, not by much. At least we'll get rid of most of the rainfall, so the clouds will be going away. Wednesday night, even cooler, back in the lower to mid 40s across portions of the rest of the area. But then as we get into around Thursday, that's where we see again sunshine and temperatures a little bit warmer back into around the mid to upper 60s to the lower to mid 70s. A little bit of clear skies out there, not by much. And then by Thursday night, low temperatures going back into around the lower to mid-60s or so. Rest of the forecast, again, showing some moderate numbers into around Thursday night into early on Friday. And Friday's high temperatures will be a little bit warmer. It looks like going back into the mid to upper 70s. Now, it's going to be, it looks like, around the area of tonight into early tomorrow morning. The best possibility of thunderstorms, if you notice, again, those red lines up there, that indicates the possibility of thunderstorms. The green line a little bit farther above that indicates where the best possibility of rainfall will be. Notice it starts again to really ramp up about sunset and afterwards going through roughly about midnight and then the rectangles become a little bit smaller and as they go a little farther on over they start to dwindle by the time they hit daybreak tomorrow morning so it looks like it's going to be more of an overnight type thing but so far the threat does not look to be anything in the way of major amounts of problems for the Mid-South where it comes to anything involving severe weather. So that is good news. But keep in mind that we need to watch that very carefully for this time of the year, and that's exactly what we'll be doing here on News Channel 3. Stay tuned for more information throughout the rest of the evening with Tim and Jim. We'll have details to follow on what's going on with the forecast later on tonight, starting on News Channel 3 at 6, which is on as I record this, News Channel 3 at 10. And, of course, heading to tomorrow morning, we'll have more with News Channel 3's Todd Demers. Live and direct from House Honor, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick weather update called Weather Overtime, our online video weather blog. Thanks for joining us and keep it tuned to all the basic social media, which you can find right down here in the red bar and, of course, in those icons up above me right there. And don't forget about stopping by at wreg.com weather. Thanks for joining us and have a good and safe Tuesday evening.